Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, of course this is Shackleton, the Explorer. Right now, many people that um, are following uh, climate change closely have their eyes uh, heading to the north, to the to the Arctic, because the Arctic sea ice is melting very, very rapidly, and uh, we have about three or four weeks to find out the uh, what the minimum of the uh, sea ice uh, looks like. Uh, it doesn't look like a blue ocean event will occur, uh, but we're going to be very close to the 2012 uh, record. You know, don't know if a new minimum will be set. Depends a lot on uh, local conditions up in the Arctic in the next three or four weeks. But the big question that uh, this guy's a little bit restless. I think he wants to get down. So let him down. The, the big question is, um, you know, what happens to the Arctic during the Blue Ocean event? How do things play out um, at lower latitudes? So that's, uh, you know, lack of sea ice leads to changes in the ocean circulation and also in the um, jet streams, in the atmospheric circulation. You know, we're seeing this uh, manifested in huge numbers of extreme weather events and very, very strange uh, weather situations. Uh, you know, we're getting lots of heat waves in various places. We're getting um, lots of uh, strange, uh, you know, weather, pat weather extremes, including things like derechos, you know, which are lines of straight line winds, a frontal storm crossing across the U.S. wreaking havoc on, on a lot of uh, crops and so on. Um, so, but I want to talk about the, um, you know, what can we tell about the present warming in the Arctic if we look back in the paleo records? And if you look back uh, between 120,000 and 11,000 years ago, there were these oscillations called Dansgaard Osher oscillations. And these show up in the Greenland uh, ice core records. And what happened is during the glacial period, so after the interglacial, the last interglacial was warm and then it cooled off. And then we had these abrupt warming transitions and then a slow return back to the colder state, another abrupt warming return back. We had about 20, such, 20 different excursions um, in this cycle of these Dansgaard Osher oscillations. And the warming in those time periods was above one degree Celsius per decade, which is sort of the occurring now, which is kind of the criteria to, to according to this paper I'm going to discuss, to call it abrupt Arctic uh, climate change. So what do I mean by abrupt? Abrupt is the transition of the climate system into a different mode on a time scale that's faster than the respected uh, forcing. So, you know, for example, you know, a canoe tipping is an abrupt transition, right? Breaking, snapping a stick, uh, water freezing. Uh, so you've got a liquid, suddenly you have a solid. When you drop a very small amount of temperature, when you're right at the transition point, you know, a tree falling, all of these things are abrupt changes. They're usually associated with thresholds, tipping points. The transition is very sharp, nonlinear, and often they're irreversible. So let's have a look at the paper. And uh, so this is a figure uh, from the paper, which I'll get back to. So here's the title of the paper. It's called Past Perspectives on the Present era of abrupt climate change. Um, before I go into this, uh, please, here's my website, paulbeckwith.net. Um, so my last post was about sort of the Arctic sea ice status update and the tragedy in Greenland. Um, so check out those videos if you haven't. So now, you know, what happens when, when the Arctic sea ice goes in terms of, you know, what can we tell from the Greenland ice cores, from the paleoclimate, um, when we have rapid warming such as, such as there is today. If you're not following me at Paul H. Beckwith, please follow me on Twitter and also on my uh, Facebook page. 
So the Arctic sea ice, uh, the best, if you go to Arctic sea ice graphs, you know, Google the site at the very bottom, there's a map of the Arctic and I'm going to be discussing, um, you know, the sea ice and what's going on with the Atlantification of the Arctic. So, so we've got the, the, um, so we've got the, the, uh, Greenland sea here, um, and, uh, the Barents sea here. So the water is changing here. It's getting a lot warmer and the salinity is also changing. So I'm going to discuss that. So Arctic sea ice graphs is always a great place to start. And you can see, you know, this is the extent of the ice. So it's at the moment, August 20th, 2020, it's pulled all the way from Europe and Asia. And it's just sitting on the Canadian archipelago, um, getting still large declines over 100,000 uh, uh, square kilometers per day declines. There's lots of export out through the Fram Strait still and out it through into the Canadian archipelago. It's melting from above and it's melting from below. Okay, um, the, in this paper I'm discussing, uh, many of the ice core measurements were made on Greenland. Uh, NGRIP, Northern, Northern Greenland uh, Ice Project, about 3,000 roughly three kilometers elevation. So central Greenland, that's where the ice core uh, isotope data is extracted from. Okay, so let's get into this uh, paper here. So abrupt climate change is a striking feature of many climate records, particularly the warming events in Greenland ice cores. These are very abrupt and very high amplitude events and they're tightly coupled to rapid sea ice retreat in the North Atlantic and Nordic seas. Observational evidence shows that they have global repercussions. In the present day Arctic, sea ice loss is also key to ongoing warming. Okay, so this uh, paper, it uses observations and climate models to place contemporary Arctic change, what's happening today into the context of past abrupt Greenland warmings. We find that warming rates similar to or higher than modern trends have only occurred during past abrupt glacial episodes. The Arctic is currently experiencing an abrupt climate change event and that climate models are underestimating this ongoing warming. Okay, so the Arctic's warming on average more than twice the global mean. Now it's actually more like three to five times the higher, the further north you go, the rap, more rapid the warming rate is. Okay, sea ice extent is decreasing in all months. Okay, and there's also significant sea ice thinning. So the, the, the area is also rapidly decreasing so, and the volume is decreasing. And this change has of course local and remote or long distance impacts on the climate system. It affects the local surface energy budget because the Arctic is becoming a much darker place. It also affects the large scale ocean and atmospheric circulation patterns. Now the question is, is the speed of this recent change unprecedented? How do trends compare to the most abrupt changes in the paleo record? Okay, so, so let's have a look at the, the results. Okay, so this is the air temperature at two meters, so six feet above the surface. It's, the scale is degrees Celsius per decade. And the outline here if you, is, is rates that are above one degree Celsius per decade. Okay, and that can, that can be, that's clearly abrupt change, abrupt Arctic change. So this whole region, Greenland's down here. This is Europe and Asia on this side, uh, Canadian archipelago here. So the warming uh, above one degree Celsius per decade is primarily over, you know, it's over the Arctic, but heading, you know, mostly on the Europe, Asia side. Okay, and warming above 1.5 degrees C per decade is here and there's actually some regions above 2.5. Okay, this is over the last 40 years from the reanalysis data, the European reanalysis data. 
um, over a, almost a, over a 40 year period, basically. Now, the Arctic sea ice um, decline, uh, the concentration trend decline as a percentage per decade is the red is a decline. So da up here, you know, down a 10% drop in sea ice concentration per decade change. So where the very, very warmest areas is, that encompasses the area where the ice is. But if you look at this border here, which is correlated, which is this border here, you can see that there's rapid sea ice loss also out in this region and, you know, encompassing, you know, the, 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 the very, very warmest uh, temperature trend areas have, have the very, very highest uh, ice drop exceeding 10% uh, per decade loss. Okay, so all along the Eurasia side. So this is what we're seeing right now. Now, if you look at the Greenland, uh, uh, the grip, the end grip isotope data, giving you the temperature, and this is looking at the last 60,000 years. Here's where we are today, you know, an interglacial, and here's where the um, temperature is at the surface, the, the star here. And this is a model for the future, and this is the data from the ice core. And what you see is the red lines, the abrupt temperature rises and the red lines at all these different intervals, and then the subsequent drop to uh, the slower drop to the colder stadial period. Um, the temperature change at that location exceeds one degree Celsius per decade, all those red lines this is one magnified so you get a very rapid rise in temperature and then a slower drop okay now this is on this is at the end grip site so the end grip site is right here okay so keep that in mind in order for the temperature you know in the present day situation the warming is over on this side not right over central greenland the end grip data shows the warming directly over here um, so there is regional variability and there's a difference in where the warming is occurring now versus where the warming occurred during the Dansgaard Osher oscillation. So that's to be kept in mind. Now, this is the, com this graph compares the reconstructed and modeled Greenland abrupt changes. So the end grip data, if you take um, marine isotope uh, it, the, the Dansgaard Osher events 5 to 9 in the period 40,000 to 32,000 years before present. And if you take, if you take the um, transition of each of these and bundle them all together and look at them, the spread in the data is the, um, the light shading here. And the data from the Greenland ice core is the red the mean is the red line here. So this slope is one per degree Celsius per decade. This is two degrees Celsius per decade. The red slope is even larger, maybe two and a half or three degrees uh, Celsius per decade in this image. The computer model is the blue dashed line and it shows a similar rise, but it underestimates the actual change. The slope here, the maximum slope here of the blue curve um, is, is uh, you know, it exceeds one degree Celsius per decade, but it's, it's not as fast as the actual data the red line shows. Okay, um, and this is the spatial nature of the uh, simulation of the, of the data. So, so uh, this is the, um, the climate model. Okay, this is the the surface temperature at two meters, the, the degree Celsius increase per decade um, from the model, and it shows the warming mostly in this region to be the largest. And this, so this is, uh, you know, this was during the um, Dansgaard Osher oscillations period. Okay, so the warming, it was in different places here. Um, so the spatial distribution is different and the ice loss was largest in these regions. But again, it was a much colder period. I'll continue this in another video. Thank you for listening.